लक्ष्मीकांत इंडियन पॉलिटी चैप्टर सेवन फंडामेंटल राइट्स प्रेजेंट पोजिशन ऑफ राइट टू प्रॉपर्टी ओरिजिनली द राइट टू प्रॉपर्टी वॉज वन ऑफ द सेवन फंडामेंटल राइट्स अंडर पार्ट थ्री ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन इट वॉज डेल्ट बाय आर्टिकल नाइनटीन वन एफ एंड आर्टिकल थर्टी वन आर्टिकल नाइनटीन वन एफ गारंटीड टू एवरी सिटीजन द राइट टू अक्वायर होल्ड एंड डिस्पोज ऑफ प्रॉपर्टी आर्टिकल थर्टी वन ऑन द अदर हैंड गारंटीड टू एवरी पर्सन वेदर सिटीजन और नॉन सिटीजन राइट अगेंस्ट डेप्रिवेशन ऑफ हिज प्रॉपर्टी इट प्रोवाइडेड दैट नो पर्सन शैल बी डिप्राइव्ड ऑफ हिज प्रॉपर्टी एक्सेप्ट बाय अथॉरिटी ऑफ लॉ इट एम्पावर्ड द स्टेट टू अक्वायर और रिक्विजिशन द प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ अ पर्सन ऑन टू कंडीशन ए इट शुड बी फॉर पब्लिक पर्पज एंड b it should provide for payment of compensation amount to the owner since the commencement of the constitution the fundamental right to property has been the most controversial it has caused confrontations between the supreme court and the parliament it has led to a number of constitutional amendments that is first 4th 7th 25th 39th 40th and 42nd amendments Through these amendments articles 31a 31b and 31c have been added and modified from time to time to nullify the effect of supreme court judgments and to protect certain laws from being challenged on the grounds of contravention of fundamental rights most of the litigation centered around the obligation of the state to pay compensation for acquisition or requisition of private property therefore the 44th amendment act of 1978 abolished the right to property as a fundamental right by repealing article 19 1 f and article 31 from part 3 instead the act inserted a new article 300a in part 12 under the heading right to property it provides that no person shall be deprived of his property except by authority of law thus the right to property still remains a legal right or a constitutional right though no longer a fundamental right it is not a part of the basic structure of the constitution the right to property as a legal right as distinct from the fundamental rights has the following implications a it can be regulated i curtailed abridged or modified without constitutional amendment by an ordinary law of the parliament b it protects private property against executive action but not against legislative action c in case of violation the aggrieved person cannot directly move the supreme court under article 32 right to constitutional remedies including writs for its enforcement he can move the high court under article 226 d no guaranteed right to compensation in case of acquisition or requisition of the private property by the state though the fundamental right to property under part 3 has been abolished the part 3 still carries to provisions which provide for the guaranteed right to compensation in case of acquisition or requisition of the private property by the state these two cases where compensation has to be paid are a when the state acquires the property of a minority educational institution article 30 and b when the state acquires the land held by a person under his personal cultivation and the land is within the statutory ceiling limits article 31a the first provision was added by the 44th amendment act 1978 while the second provision was added by the 17th amendment act 1964 further articles 31 a 31b and 31c have been retained as exceptions to the fundamental rights exceptions to fundamental rights one saving of laws providing for acquisition of estates etc article 31 a saves five categories of laws from being challenged and invalidated on the ground of contravention of the fundamental rights conferred by article 14 equality before law and equal protection of laws and article 19 protection of six rights in respect of speech 
assembly, movement, etc. They are related to agricultural land reforms, industry and commerce and include the following. A. Acquisition of estates and related rights by the state. B. Taking over the management of properties by the state. C. Amalgamation of corporations. D. Extinguishment or modification of rights of directors or shareholders of corporations. And E. Extinguishment or modification of mining leases. Article 31 A does not immunize a state law from judicial review unless it has been reserved for the President's consideration and has received his assent. This article also provides for the payment of compensation at market value when the state acquires the land held by a person under his personal cultivation and the land is within the statutory ceiling limit. 2. Validation of certain acts and regulations. Article 31b saves the acts and regulations included in the ninth schedule from being challenged and invalidated on the ground of contravention of any of the fundamental rights. Thus, the scope of Article 31b is wider than Article 31a. Article 31b immunizes any law included in the ninth schedule from all the fundamental rights whether or not the law falls under any of the five categories specified in Article 31a. However, in a significant judgment delivered in I.R. Coelho case, 2007, the Supreme Court ruled that there could not be any blanket immunity from judicial review of laws included in the Ninth Schedule. The Court held that judicial review is a basic feature of the Constitution and it could not be taken away by putting a law under the Ninth Schedule. It said that the laws placed under the Ninth Schedule after 24 April 1973 are open to challenge in court if they violated fundamentals rights guaranteed under Articles 14, 15, 19 and 21 or the basic structure of the Constitution. It was on 24 April 1973 that the Supreme Court first propounded the doctrine of basic structure or basic features of the Constitution in its landmark verdict in the Keswananda Bharti case. Originally, in 1951, the Ninth Schedule contained only 13 acts and regulations but at present, in 2016, their number is 282 of these. The acts and regulations of the state legislature deal with land reforms and abolition of the Zmindari system and that of the parliament deal with other matters. 3. Saving of laws giving effect to certain directive principles Article 31c as inserted by the 25th Amendment Act of 1971 contained the following two provisions. A. No law that seeks to implement the socialistic directive principles specified in Article 39b or c shall be void on the ground of contravention of the fundamental rights conferred by Article 14 equality before law and equal protection of laws, or Article 19, protection of six rights in respect of speech, assembly, movement, etc. b. No law containing a declaration that it is for giving effect to such policy shall be questioned in any court on the ground that it does not give effect to such a policy. In the Keswananda Bharti case, 1973, the Supreme Court declared the above second provision of Article 31c as unconstitutional and invalid on the ground that judicial review is a basic feature of the Constitution and hence cannot be taken away. However, the above first provision of Article 31c was held to be constitutional and valid. The 42nd Amendment Act, 1976, extended the scope of the above. First provision of Article 31c by including within its protection any law to implement any of the directive principles specified in Part 4 of the Constitution and not merely in Article 39b or c. However, this extension was declared as unconstitutional and invalid by the Supreme Court in the Minerva Mills case, 1980. Criticism of Fundamental Rights 
The fundamental rights enshrined in Part 3 of the Constitution have met with a wide and varied criticism. The arguments of the critics are 1. Excessive limitations. They are subjected to innumerable exceptions, restrictions, qualifications and explanations. Hence, the critics remarked that the Constitution grants fundamental rights with one hand and takes them away with the other. Jaspat Roy Kapoor went to the extent of saying that the chapter dealing with the fundamental rights should be renamed as Limitations on Fundamental Rights or Fundamental Rights and Limitations Thereon. 2. No Social and Economic Rights The list is not comprehensive as it mainly consists of political rights. It makes no provision for important social and economic rights like right to social security, right to work, right to employment, right to rest and leisure and so on. These rights are made available to the citizens of advanced democratic countries. Also, the socialistic constitutions of erstwhile USSR or China provided for such rights. 3. No clarity. They are stated in a vague, indefinite and ambiguous manner. The various phrases and words used in the chapter like public order, minorities, reasonable restriction, public interest and so on are not clearly defined. The language used to describe them is very complicated and beyond the comprehension of the common man. It is alleged that the constitution was made by the lawyers for the lawyers. Sir Ivor Jennings called the Constitution of India a paradise for lawyers. 4. No permanency. They are not sacrosanct or immutable, as the Parliament can curtail or abolish them, as for example, the abolition of the fundamental right to property in 1978. Hence, they can become a play tool in the hands of politicians having majority support in the Parliament. The judicially innovated doctrine of basic structure is the only limitation on the authority of Parliament to curtail or abolish the fundamental right. 5. Suspension during emergency The suspension of their enforcement during the operation of national emergency, except Articles 20 and 21, is another blot on the efficacy of these rights. This provision cuts at the roots of democratic system in the country by placing the rights of the millions of innocent people in continuous jeopardy. According to the critics, the fundamental rights should be enjoyable in all situations, emergency or no emergency. 6. Expensive Remedy The judiciary has been made responsible for defending and protecting these rights against the interference of the legislatures and executives. However, the judicial process is too expensive and hinders the common man from getting his rights enforced through the courts. Hence, the critics say that the rights benefit mainly the rich section of the Indian society. 7. Preventive Detention The critics assert that the provision for preventive detention, Article 22, takes away the spirit and substance of the chapter on fundamental rights. It confers arbitrary powers on the state and negates individual liberty. It justifies the criticism that the Constitution of India deals more with the rights of the state against the individual than with the rights of the individual against the state. Notably, no democratic country in the world has made preventive detention as an integral part of their constitutions as has been made in India. 8. No Consistent Philosophy According to some critics, the chapter on fundamental rights is not the product of any philosophical principle. Sir Ivor Jennings expressed this view when he said that the fundamental rights proclaimed by the Indian constitution are based on no consistent philosophy. The critics say that this creates difficulty for the Supreme Court and the High Courts in interpreting the fundamental rights. Significance of Fundamental Rights In spite of the above criticism and shortcomings, the fundamental rights are significant in the following respects. 1. They constitute the bedrock of democratic system in the country. 
Two, they provide necessary conditions for the material and moral protection of man. Three, they serve as a formidable bulwark of individual liberty. Four, they facilitate the establishment of rule of law in the country. Five, they protect the interests of minorities and weaker sections of society. Six, they strengthen the secular fabric of the Indian state. Seven, they check the absoluteness of the authority of the government. Eight, they lay down the foundation stone of social equality and social justice. Nine, they ensure the dignity and respect of individuals. Ten, they facilitate the participation of people in the political and administrative process. Rights outside Part 3 Besides the fundamental rights included in Part 3, there are certain other rights contained in other parts of the Constitution. These rights are known as constitutional rights or legal rights or non-fundamental rights. They are 1. No tax shall be levied or collected except by authority of law, Article 265 in Part 12. 2. No person shall be deprived of his property save by authority of law, Article 300-A in Part 12. 3. Trade, commerce and intercourse throughout the territory of India shall be free, Article 301 in Part 13. Even though the above rights are also equally justiciable, they are different from the fundamental rights. In case of violation of a fundamental right, the aggrieved person can directly move the Supreme Court for its enforcement under Article 32, which is in itself a fundamental right. But, in case of violation of the above rights, the aggrieved person cannot avail this constitutional remedy. He can move the High Court by an ordinary suit or under Article 226, Writ Jurisdiction of High Court. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you want to buy this book, then link in the description you can buy it from there. If this video helped you in any way so please do like and share this video and hit the subscribe button.